Wow! This is real life, folks. This is not photoshopped. This is an actual photograph with a driveway with a freaking pole in the middle of it, folks. Bad contractors are everywhere. Bad general contractors are... It's the new epidemic, man. I don't know why y'all worried about COVID-19. I'm worried about bad contractors. And today, I am going to help you spot a bad contractor because there's actually a lot of red flags out there. A lot of things that I see people like you doing uh, gra that, that is allowing you to gravitate towards these bad contractors. So let's let's have a little discussion, huh? Welcome to the show, y'all. I am James Wise, and I am here to help you guys with your real estate needs, okay? If you're new to the show, myself, I've uh, sold $200 million worth of real estate. I run a $75 million investment portfolio, uh, many, many rental properties, a lot of which in the uh, lower income Section 8 space. I've developed land. I've wholesaled, flipped, this, that, done it all, right? Also run a very large contracting company. So I know a thing or two about houses and the real estate construction industry, right? And today we're going to be talking about bad contractors, man. And bad contractors, like I said at the top, it, it, it's an epidemic, dude. Uh, hiring a contractor, honestly, for for like you know first time home buyers, who people who are not in the real estate business, uh, or people who are real estate investors but they're new real estate investors, it, it's totally different than anything you've ever done. Okay, and honestly, part of why my company has been so successful is is because I identified that. Right, right off the bat, that like contractors in regular people, they don't like speak the same language. And that was something that I identified early on when I started my business. And that was actually part of the reason my business works, right? Like my business, we help investors invest in real estate and we do like sales, analysis, acquisition, property management, and, and construction, right? My background is sales, customer service. Uh, marketing media in my partner, right? I'm Wise. Holt, my company's Holton Wise, Holton Wise TV, right? My name is James Wise. My partner, uh, his name is John Holton, right? The Holton in Holton Wise, which off topic, I, we get like a lot of comments on Holton Wise TV where people like call me Holton Wise. Like my name is Holton Wise. Like, like I'm Holton C Caulfield or whatever from like the catcher in the rye. Not the case. I am James Wise. The Ask James Wise Show. Anyway, Holton's a regular, you know, another person. John Holton, he has a regular first name, right? Neither of us are from the catcher in the rye is the, the moral of the story. But he's got a background in construction, right? He had like 20 years in construction uh, when we teamed up, right? And quickly, we, we determined uh, <clears throat> early on, like processes, right, to bridge that gap from regular regular mom and pop people, Joe Schmoes, regular people on the street, regular investors uh, in contractors, right? And honestly, because they don't speak the same language, and honestly, what a lot of you guys are referring to as contractors, right? They're not even contractors. They're really like subs, right, or day laborers, right? A lot of you guys think you're hiring contractors and you're hiring day laborers. More on that shortly. We'll get into that because that's one of the red flags. That's one of the things that leads you to having a freaking pole in the middle of your driveway, right? So what was nice and what was so successful about Holton Wise is me with the sales side, when we're working with homeowners and like a lot of our clientele is like, uh, you know, people from like the tech industry, uh, you know, we get people working in Silicon Valley in California, things like that, right? A lot of those people, right? So that's like one end of the conversation spectrum is like, you know, an engineer who lives in friggin' San Francisco, right? And then all the way on the other end of the spectrum is, is like a bricklayer, right? The two do not speak the same language. So like the gap was made, right? Like those people could talk to like myself and the customer service uh, face that we put up. And then, you know, then that gets to, to John and then 
uh, John and the contractors, you know, he knows how to speak the language, right? So it's like a nice little game of telephone uh, with languages decoded and translated, right? So that's the first thing we need to discuss as we get into spotting bad contractors and just overall ending up with bad results, okay? Uh what a general contractor is, is, is really the bridge that I, am, that I just talked about creating. That's why my company works so well. We created that bridge, right? The, 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 the contractor, even though a contractor is going to have experience in the trades and know about the trades and have done the trades, uh, a true general contractor, folks, is not typically going to be the guy who's physically holding the paintbrush, right? So that's... The very first thing that I think a lot of you guys are doing out there, you're running into people uh, that aren't really true general contractors. The general contractor's job is to keep everybody in line, translate the people speaking different languages, bridge those gaps. Uh, the homeowner to customer to engineer from California, they don't speak the same language as the guy hanging drywall. All my people out there who understand the trades, they know that the guys who actually physically hang the drywall, they, they can't be talking to customers, y'all. We know this, okay? They're freaking... They're drywall guys. Come on. We, we know that they can't talk to an engineer. It's just not how it's going to work, right? So a lot of you guys out there, you're trying to hire people, uh, and you're calling them contractors, and they're, like, physically the guys physically, like, putting the nail to the wall. Those are not contractors. Those are day laborers. Those are subs. Those are tradesmen, right? So if you're out there, folks, and you're trying to hire a contractor, Make sure it is actually a contractor, somebody with a staff, somebody with overhead, somebody who's overseeing the guys physically doing the job. If it's just a one guy, a chuck in a truck, so to speak, that's like a one-man operation, you are at an increased risk of running into a situation like this. Like, that's just a fly-by-night, one-man shop. Now, if you have some experience in the real estate industry, uh, that could eventually be something that works well for you. But at the very beginning, that's really not what you want to do. You want to go with a big, legitimate company. They might be more expensive, but they have the infrastructure and set up in place uh, to where you know you're consistently going uh, to get the result you seek, right? Because when you're working directly with tradesmen and subs, what you have to understand is the construction industry is full of flakes, full of drunks, full of drug addicts, right? They don't tell you that, but that's really what it's about, right? Like when you see like, uh, like the Bob Vila shows and you got this like, well-spoken, educated man with his tool belt, right? Or like Home Improvement with Tim the Tool Man Taylor and Al Borland with his flannel and his beard, right? These well-spoken, well-educated, upper-middle-class or higher men. Folks, in real life, those are not the fucking guys that are hanging your drywall, that are caulking your baseboards, okay? They're just not, right? Uh, so... The industry itself is, is is very flaky, right? So you take like a general contractor and the people working up uh, under them, right? Uh, they're probably like, you know, little widgets and chess pieces moving in and out because, you know, they're riding through why guys are doing good, but then they fall off the wagon, they're doing bad, they're replacing those guys, right? So they're, they're presenting to you, right? Like you're here, they're in the middle, and this is just nice and consistent, and you get the product you pay for, you know, 100% of the time. And then from this side to actually getting the work done, it's like complete freaking chaos that these guys are essentially shielding you from. That's what you're paying them for, right? So that's number one. Make sure you're hiring an actual contractor. Now, there are handymen. There are times where you can get work done directly through laborers and things like that. But again, that should only be for the expert, okay? That should only be for the person who knows what's going on in the business. So if you are watching this show right now because you're trying to figure out how to hire a contractor, you ain't that person, right? You're not there yet, okay? You don't have experience in the business, right? So you need to just hire a contractor. If you got to pay more, you got to pay. Well, you do have to pay more. You're going to have to pay more, but that's okay because... What you want, not necessarily the best price, you want 
to make sure your job gets done how it's supposed to be done 100% of the time. And if you work with an experienced contractor, big overhead, a company that's got long list of online reviews, long list of relationships, customers, they have a lot to lose, you reduce your risk of somebody flaking on you. Chuck in a truck's, you know, one guy, freaking Vince in a van, I don't know, they're fly by night. Sometimes it works out great, and it works out great till it doesn't, but sometimes it doesn't, they flake out on you, right? So that's numero uno. Number two, definitely, we kind of touched on it over there, it's price, right? I know everybody gives you like that boilerplate, like get three bids and then pick one. Okay, say you get three bids for a job, folks. And bid A is 25 grand, bid B is 23 grand, and bid C is 12 grand. A lot of you out there, you're like, oh, hell yeah, 12 grand. I just saved 12, 13 grand. You go with that guy. That's wrong, dog. You know what happens when you get a 25, a 24, and a $12,000 bid to do a job? The $12,000 bid looks like this by the time it's done, okay? I'm not saying you should automatically go with the highest price at all times. But if you do get three bids and there is like a serious outlier and it is seriously below what the other guys are charging you, that is a huge red flag. Please resist the urge to be a penny-pinching cheap ass here. I could almost guarantee you if you run into an extreme outlier situation like that, the guy whose price is way less than the other guys, you have a much higher than average chance of ending up with a freaking pole in your driveway, right? So don't do that, right? Another tip for you guys, make sure the people are licensed, bonded, and insured, right? When you're working with those one, one-man shops, those trucking the trucks, that kind of stuff doesn't always happen, right? Or... Maybe you're working with somebody who only wants to do cash deals, right? He only works under the table, right? That's a guy right there uh, literally committing tax evasion, right? His business model is by definition criminal, right? If you are brand new to the business, you have no idea what you're doing, and your job is to, uh, like your goal, right, should be, right, to get your job done correctly, as close to 100% of the time as possible. I don't think it makes very much sense for you to enter into a business relationship with a criminal enterprise, right? Just by definition of the fact that they're running a criminal enterprise, uh, you know, that's really going to increase uh, your outcome probability, right? Your negative outcome probability. That'll increase your negative outcome probability, right? So that's another thing. Licensed, bonded, insured, everything above board, actual legitimate invoices. They actually pay their taxes. I know a lot of you guys out there are watching this, and you guys think something like that, working under the table is like akin to jaywalking. But, I mean, if you really think about it, it's actually friggin' tax evasion, folks. That's kind of a big deal, and that should be a red flag to you, that they don't mind cutting corners uh, doing the wrong thing, circumventing the law, right? So maybe they'll cut corners with you. You have a higher than average probability of that happening, okay? That is another issue. Another thing, uh, places like Craigslist, guys, all right, if, uh, you know, you're meeting your quote-unquote contractor on Craigslist, it's probably a red flag that you're going to end up with a job that looks like this. He's probably a, a fellow that doesn't know what he's doing. I mean, let's be real. It's Craigslist. What you're going to find on a place like Craigslist is going to be a truck in a truck who works uh, cash only under the table, Okay. And his, his quotes will probably be big outliers, right? Like, you're going to see all of those red flags all at once, okay? You don't, you don't want to do that, right? Another thing, and, and this is like, it's out there on websites. Like, you see it on places like Bigger Pockets, those forums where investors get together and talk, right? Uh, you see people saying it on Facebook groups all the time about investors. Oh, you got to drive to Home Depot in the morning. You go there at like 6 in the morning, and there's this guy sitting there. That's who you got to hire. 
Again, those eight contractors, those are day laborers looking for contractors to hire them for the day, okay? If you're brand new at this, not what you want to do. That goes back to you're not hiring an actual contractor. You're just working direct with the day laborers. Trust me, there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes in between the actual laborer and you, the customer, that you'll never know. You don't want to know. Trust. You just have to trust me on this, okay? Uh, another thing, another thing. OK, and this could be almost as scary uh, because of how tempting it is for you, the customer, uh, to fall into this trap, which makes it very risky. Right. This is almost as scary as the cheapest guy. Right. Everybody's like, yes, this guy's half price. I'm saving all that money. That's what you think. But in reality, you're probably going to end up with this. OK, uh, just like that. The other thing just as dangerous is the guy who's ready to start the job tomorrow. OK, folks, as I talk to you, it is 2022 over the last couple years. We have never had our supply chains interrupted or stressed as much as during this time period. And if you were a good contractor for the last decade, you were probably months out on work. If you were effective, efficient, reliable and reasonably priced, you probably are two, three, four months out on some of your jobs, okay? That's just the nature of the construction industry. Then when you add in all these supply chain limitations we've been facing, it sometimes even extended that. Like during the, the height of the COVID pandemic, it was pretty rough, right? Timelines were crazy long, okay? So now more than ever, if you go to hire a contractor and he's able to be like, yeah, I could come renovate your house. What day is it today? Tuesday, I'll be there Wednesday. Send me the deposit. Now, folks, if your guy can start tomorrow, there's a problem. Because that means if you did not just hire them right there, right now, today, that motherfucker was unemployed tomorrow. There's a reason he was unemployed tomorrow, folks. Do not fall into the trap of choosing a contractor just because they are available to work the very next day. Because you want to know what happens when you hire a contractor who wasn't doing nothing tomorrow other than watching freaking Save by the Bell reruns and eating pizza? He's putting a driveway with a pole in it in your house. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.